Okay, let's talk through um, some of the module one homework. Um, I gave you some of the answers, so let's kind of talk through a little bit. Number one says, in high school, Sam grew from 60 inches tall to 74 inches tall. What was his change in height? So he, one thing to think about is, did he get taller or shorter? Because if he got taller, which he did, we would expect that change to be positive. If he got smaller, right, if the number went down, we would expect that change to be negative. So when we do the subtraction, we would do 74 minus 60, and we get 14 inches. Compare that to number two, where it says Juan started a new diet, and over the last few months, his weight went from 198.3 pounds to 192.5. So his weight went down. So when we find that change, we would expect to get a negative number. Because when we find a change, we want that sign to tell us something. If, he went, if the number went up, we get positive. If the number went down, we get negative. And so that's why right here we did 192.5 minus 198.3, and so we get that negative number. Another way you can think about things is using a number line, right? So somewhere over here, 0, 192.5. Sorry, I'll make this bigger. Um, 198.3. And so essentially he went from here and he went this way, which is a decrease of 5.8 pounds. That's going to help us a little on number three. It says when Julia woke up this morning at six, the temperature outside was negative eight degrees Fahrenheit. So again, I could do this if I wanted to. So negative eight, there's zero. When she got home from school, the temp outside was 34 degrees. What was the change in temp? So it started here and it went all the way to here. And so what is that change? Well, to find it, we would do 34 minus a negative 8 in this case, which is going to be a positive 42 degrees Fahrenheit. That should make sense because from 0 to 8 degrees, sorry, negative 8 degrees to 0, it went up by 8 degrees, but then it had to go up 34 degrees more. So altogether, it's kind of like we ended up adding. All right, the same thing is going to be true as you go through. Um, I'm not going to work through all of these. I will specifically say that when you get down to like part D, when it says it went from 5 to M degrees, uh, you could just substitute in a value. So like for example, if M was 10 and it went from 5 to 10, you would do 10 minus 5, you get 5. All right, well, what if instead of 10, what if it was 15 degrees? So it went from 5 to 15, well, you would have done 15 minus 5. All right, so you'd still do the same operation. Okay, well, that's if the number gets bigger. Well, what if it went to like 2 so if it went from 5 to 2, well, that should be a decrease of 3. And so actually, we're again going to do the same operation. So whether it was 10, to, like 10, sorry, 5 to 10 or 5 to 15 or 5 to 2, in each case, we're going to do the same operation of whatever M is, we are going to subtract 5, and that's going to get me my change in C. So it feels kind of abstract, but if you substitute numbers in for M, it might help you out. Number five, I'm going to skip because I know I put it in the solutions. Number six, just real quick to make sure, right? We're going from two to six, and so we want to find that change, so we would do six minus two. From six to 24, we want to find that change, so we would actually do 24 minus six. I don't know if you've noticed it yet, but there's a pattern. Anytime I want to find the change in the value, you're going to want to take the value you went to. This is very technical. It's not, actually and you're gonna subtract the value you came from, right? So if we went from 24 to 39, right? We, did, we would do 39 minus 24, and we're gonna get 15. Um, and so just as, just as you're aware, as you kind of keep working through things. Specifically, I wanna talk about these last page um, and numbers 15 and 16. Um, we've already done 15 a few times within module one, um, but let's just make sure. So it says, when making lemonade using a powdered mix, the recipe suggests a mixture of 20 cups of water for eight scoops of mix. Suppose you want to use 12 scoops of mix, how much water should you use? I tend to be um, a table person just because it helps me organize things. So over here, I'm going to make a table. So let's do the... I guess I'm going to do the number of scoops, sorry, of mix and the number of cups of water. So this is cups of water. This is scoops of mix. And I'm going to organize it this way. So I know that eight scoops of mix calls for 20 cups of water. We have 12 scoops of mix. We're looking for this. So we need to use all three ways. So if we're doing scaling, we want to compare the same quantity to the same quantity. And what I mean is we would want to compare 12 to 8. 
So I would do 12 divided by 8, and that's going to tell me 1 and a half. So that means that I used 1 and a half times as much mix, therefore I need to use 1 and a half times as much water. So in terms of scaling, really what I could say, so 12 over 8 is 1.5. So I have, so you have 1.5 times as much mix. You need to have 1.5 times as much water. Oh no. Water. And so you would do 12 times 1.5, and you're going to get, oh no, where'd it go? Oh, sorry, not 12. I was like, something went wrong. You're going to do 20 times 1.5, and you're going to get 30 cups. And that's going to be our solution. All right, if we did the constant multiple, um, that would be looking at my unit rate. And so that'd be saying, okay, well, I'm going to say that the I first need to find the rate. So I do 20 cups of water over 12 um, scoops of mix. And so then you're going to get 2.5 cups of water. Sorry, I meant to make this a different color, but I didn't. Per scoop of mix. And so essentially what we're getting right here, I guess I'll do a different color now just because. So if we pretend like I did this in green the whole time, right, we'd say, hey, this right here is 2.5 times as large so right here 2.5 because it's 2.5 cups of water per scoop now I have 12 scoops times 2.5 cups of water per scoop and it's going to get me 30 cups of water All right again we get the same thing just a different way of reasoning and then finally if I go I guess I'll go purple for the constant ratio, even though I'm still running out of space, um, I would set that up like 20 cups of water. So it's going to be similar to the setup there. Over 12 scoops of mix is equal to, I'm so sorry, this is so messy, um, is going to be equal to, essentially we could say like W, however many cups of water, to 20 scoops of mix. Probably the easiest way to solve for this is just multiply both sides by uh, 20 to get the 20 out of the denominator. And when you do that, you're gonna get W equals 30 cups of water. Oops. So no matter which way you solve it, you should get 30 cups of water as your solution. All right, number 16 says the following table gives the salary of a salesman given the number of sales they've made. So is the salesman's salary proportional to the number of sales made? Right, so essentially we just need to pick one of those three ways of reasoning and show whether that way is true or false. Uh, honestly, the easiest way to show proportionality is doing is looking at the constant ratio. You can do it the other way, um, but the ratio really is going to be the most efficient use of our time. So if we wanted to know, we'd want to know is the ratio of sales to the number of sorry salary to the number of sales always going to be the same? And so we'd set up like 13,570 over 6, right? Is that equal to 18,925 over 15, right? And I could set up all of this. 50 over 30 equal to 39,750 over 50. Because if the quantities are proportional, all of those fractions have to be equal. And so when I do that, so the first one I get something like this when I put it in my calculator. The second one I get this number. Immediately we see that they are not, and so I don't even have to bother continuing because once I show that two of the ratios aren't the same, then we can say that the, the two quantities are not proportional. And I can be done with it. If you want to go find the other two, you can, but it's not necessary. All right, so then if I want to say for part B, is the change in the sal salary proportional to the change in the number of sales? I need to come up here and I need to build out my table and find those changes first. So I need to find each of these six changes. So I would do 15 minus six, I'm gonna get nine. 30 minus 15 is 15 and 50 minus 30 is 20. Um, on the salary, I would do 18,925 minus 13,570. When you do that, 
use your calculator. You get 53.55 from 27.850 to 18.925. You're going to get 89.25. And then for your last change, you'll get 11,900. So then I'm going to look, okay, and say, is the change in salary to the change in number of sales the same? So I will do 53.55 over 9. Is that equal to 89.25 over 15? And is that equal to 11,900 over 20? So when I put the first one in my calculator, I get 595. When I put the second one in my calculator, I get 595. Woo! I can't stop there because in order to show that it's always the same, the, the proportionality, you have to show it's always the same. So I do have to stop and keep going and find out that this is also 595. And so the answer here is yes, the ratio of the change in salary to the change in number of sales is constant. So those quantities are proportional.